Mel Allen broadcast his first Major League Baseball game when he was 24 years old. And for the past 12 years, he's been identified as the voice of the New York Yankees. But he's also done more than his share of broadcasting special events as well as other sports, and he's done them very well. Mel, who is now 44, grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, went to college when he was only 15. He graduated from law school, but he deserted the law to become a sports announcer. I've known Mel for a long while, and the only time we have any disagreement is when his Yankees are playing in the World Series against my Dodgers. Mel Allen lives with his mother and father in this white frame house in Bedford Village, New York, surrounded by about 18 acres of hills, trees, rocks, and water. It's about, oh, 40 miles from the concrete and steel of Yankee Stadium. Where are you, Mel? <laughs> How about that? Mel Allen and his yacht. <laughs> Hello, Ed. Pull hard on the left door. <laughs> you aren't going to make it. <laughs> oh, I'll make it. What, what are you doing in a boat at this time of night? Well, isn't everybody doing this sort of thing? <laughs> are you going to make it, Admiral? Oh, yes. Well, Good. since since you asked me, no, I don't think everybody's doing that sort of thing at this hour of night. Uh, you're not trying to make a getaway, are you? No, Ed, I was out <laughs> trying to see where some of these fish are my daddy always catches out here. I don't have a chance to get them too much. Are there any fish in that pond, really? Yes, there's some brook trout and bass and perch. A few bullheads. I never have a chance to get them. I think he gets most of them. <laughs> you know, if you tried real hard, you could probably talk a fish out of that pond. <laughs> I wish I could. I don't think I could do that, but I believe they understand my father's language, Ed. <laughs> he gets most of them out of there. In fact, the other day he caught a, well, just this afternoon, a pickerel is about 16 inches long, and he got quite a kick <laughs> out of that. Uh, Mel, uh, do you yeah. ever get bored during ball games day after day? No, I don't, Ed, because each day presents something new, and every game you find different personnel in it. You never get bored with it because there's no script written in advance, as you know, and it, the excitement of wondering what's going to happen gives you a brand new thrill every day. Well, I suppose if the major leagues expand to the coast, you'll at least have a change of scenery. Uh, do you think this is imminent? Yes. They have already moved out to Milwaukee in Kansas City, and, of course, there's talk of Brooklyn moving on out to... Los Angeles, but I think it'll be quite a while yet because you got to get two teams out there, say in San Francisco, but there are schedule problems, travel problems, and of course, if you take two cities out of the Pacific Coast League, there are franchise problems involved there, but with the shift in population, I think that in the next few years, the major leagues will eventually go out where the population is going. Uh-huh. Ed, I'd like you to meet my mother. How are you doing, Mr. Maurer? Good evening, Mrs. Allen. I'm so delighted you're visiting us this it's uh, evening. We're awful proud that you thought enough of us to come with to visit us. Well, it's very nice of you to let us come. Uh, tell me, do you have the whole family together for the holidays? Yes, we do. We have our children here. Ed, this is again. my uh, sister, Mrs. Kaufman, her husband, Dr. Kaufman, and their two children, mother's grandchildren, my niece and nephew. This is Billy and Risa Kaufman. My brother Larry, who works with me, of course, in all sports events, and his wife, Marjorie. Good evening. Good, Good evening, evening Mr. Mr. Morrow. What, what a fine-looking family you have, Mrs. Allen. Thank M you very much. Mrs. Allen, uh, I've known Mel for many years, and I've heard him talk so often of you and his father. You must be a very close family, aren't you? Yes, sir, we certainly are. We're very proud of our children. I think my husband and I are very fortunate parents to have this lovely little family that we have. Ed, I'd like you to meet my father. Good. Mom, come on, we'll go see Dad, the fisherman. <laughs> He's probably thinking about the one that got away, Ed. He, uh, he knows almost every fish in that pond by heart, even the ones that didn't nibble. <laughs> He's the fellow that can really talk to them. Dad, I'd like you to meet Mr. Murrow. Good evening, Mr. Allen. How are you, Mr. Murrow? I'm fine, thank you. Mr. Allen, uh, Mel didn't have very much luck at the pond, but... Uh, he tells me that's because you hook all the fish while he's out working. Is that right? Yes, I I have more time, and uh, I do most of the fishing. That's why I, I catch more. Probably have more patience, too. That's right. Tell me, do you ever regret that Mel gave up the law to become a sports broadcaster? Well, uh, at first, when uh, he mentioned going to New York, I was very apprehensive. 
I uh, thought that he had a very bright future as a lawyer in the state of Alabama. But uh, because he loves his work so well, and since it turned out as it has, I have no regrets. Mel, uh, how about that? You have any regrets? <laughs> no, I don't, Ed, because uh, to me, uh, sports have always been a hobby. I always wanted to be a major league player or something like that, and the fellow would almost pay people to let him broadcast sports. That's the way I felt about it. When I had the opportunity to join the Columbia Network back in 1937, I grabbed at the opportunity. Uh, Mrs. Allen, I've known Mel very seldom to be at a loss for words. Did he start talking at a very early age? As a matter of fact, Mr. Maury, he uh, started walking at nine months of age and commenced talking words, you know, and at one year, why he could almost talk to us, you know, he formed phrases, and when he was two years old, my husband took him to a ball game against my vicious, <laughs> but ever since then, I knew that I was going to live his baseball all my life, <laughs> as long as I live. <laughs> Do you still listen to him when he's broadcasting? No, I don't only listen to him, but I go to see him. <laughs> uh, Mel, uh, in broadcasting the Yankee games, you've been criticized occasionally for being a little bit too partial. Do you feel this is a fair comment? Yes, I think it's a fair criticism, uh, Ed. I think it holds true of all broadcasters broadcasting uh, the events of teams they follow every day. It isn't a case of being prejudiced. It's a case of being partisan because the broadcast is designed for the people who follow that particular team in a regional area. And it isn't uh, a case of being prejudiced at all. You describe a play fairly, but you're always emphasizing the hometown aspect of it because you're talking about that team every day. Whereas in a World Series, you're going coast to coast and you drop the emphasis uh, for the one team. You take sports pretty seriously, don't you? Yes, Ed, I do because to me, Sports is something far more important than simply the enjoyment of spectators or participants. Sports, to my way of thinking, offers to all of us, well, a wonderful way of living. I think it helps us value the heritage of our past because in sports, one finds all the principle, uh, principles our forefathers fought for in establishing our Constitution. The principles of democracy are always right there in sports. It's a man's ability alone that counts and nothing else. And in these days and times when communism is a great threat to our way of living, I think we can do nothing better than to see that our youngsters participate in sports because sports teaches them responsibility and leadership and teamwork. And teamwork, of course, is democracy. It teaches them to respect one another for what they are, regardless of their faith or creed. And they grow up with that idea within them, and then that becomes the practical example of the working of the spirit of the brotherhood of man under the fatherhood of God. Sports are games of rules. It teaches them to respect the rules of the games they're playing and those who enforce the rules, and that teaches them to obey the laws of the land and those who enforce it as they grow up. All the principles of democracy are imbued within the spirit of the youngsters who play sports and they'll never be right targets for communism. And as a matter of fact, to bear it out, uh, Ed, this little prayer, since prayer is part of the power uh, of sports. I think this uh, tells more about it than anything that I could tell you. It's a game guy's prayer. It goes, Dear God, help me to be a sport in this little game of life. I don't ask for any place in the lineup. Play me where you need me. I only ask for the stuff to give you 100% of what I've got. And help me to take the bad breaks as part of the game. Help me be thankful for them. And finally, God, if fate seems to uppercut me with both hands, and I'm laid up on the shelf in sickness or old age, Help me to take that as part of the game also. And when in the dust, God, I get the final bell, I ask for no lying, complimentary stones. I'd only like to think, God, that you think that I'm a good guy. And of course, in these holidays, the greatest rule, sports being games of rules, the greatest rules ever come down to us is the golden rule. That's just another way of saying sportsmanship, just another way of saying democracy. And I imagine we'll be getting uh, a few requests in the mail for that creed, Mel. Uh, Tell me, what sort of mail do you get? Well, of course, you get all kinds. People who write in say they enjoy the sports events. Those who write in and criticize you for mistakes you make, and of course, we make a lot of them. Some who uh, write in just to find out what 
uh, may be the answer to some given sports argument, or there may be some play that happened, say, a year ago, and they want you to recall the details for them. And you know, surprisingly, we get a lot of mail from women. I'd say about half of our mail come from the fair sex. And being uh, an eligible bachelor, some proposals in the mail, I suppose? Yes, there are a lot of those that make very interesting reading, Ed. And as a matter of fact, I'm hoping that I'll find one that I might want to read the second time. <laughs> uh, Mel, uh, you've broadcast for a long time now, and under a lot of different conditions. What's the most dramatic moment you can recall? Well, of course, in the last World Series, Don Larson's perfect game provided a great emotional reaction for everyone who's been on the sports beat for many years. There's been many no-hitters, uh, drop kick in the final seven seconds of a Rose Bowl game, the win for one team, a lot of things like that. But I think the two things that will always stand out in my mind, Lou Gehrig in 1939 at Yankee Stadium, when he stood at home plate knowing that he hadn't long to live, and said, I'm the happiest man in the world. That's when he retired. And then in 1948, when Babe Ruth um, at Yankee Stadium in a Yankee uniform for the last time, they retired the number three with his robust frame now wasted away and his great voice gone to a whisper. And as I brought him out to home plate, the ovation was just tremendous. He wasn't supposed to say anything, could hardly talk. And I, had, I knew something had to be said, and I hollered to him over the din. I said, Babe, do you want to say anything? And he put his lips to my ear, and he whispered, I must. And so I introduced him and his hoarse, croaky voice amplified over the PA at Yankee Stadium. Did not recall the glories of the past, because he was one of our greatest sports heroes. But he said, thanks for how wonderful you people have been to me. He knew he hadn't long to live. But he says, do me one last favor. He said, remember the kids. I was a kid once, I was an orphan. Sports has been wonderful to me. But sports points the way to citizenship. And, and goodness and the American way of life. Take care of the kids, the babe said, and I shall never forget it, nor shall I ever forget him. Thank you very much, Bell Allen, for letting us come and visit you tonight. And would you say good night to your parents and the rest of your family, please? I sure will, Ed. Thanks ever so much for coming to visit with us. It was us. a, great, it's been a pleasure. great honor. Thank you very much, Mel. Bye, good night. Ed. Good night. <laughs>